here in a few minutes. We're glad to have you. This evening is going to be playing. We'll get started in about the next five minutes or so. But welcome. If you're with us, uh, leave a comment. If you have a prayer need, you can also go to our website, and there's a place to find a prayer card there as well. We're just glad to have you on this Labor Day weekend and this morning with us. Let others know and, uh, that you're a part of our service this morning. All right? God bless you. We'll get started in just a few minutes.
Amen. Thank you, Miss Dina. If you're watching online, I know you're blessed by that. If you're out here in the field today, I know you're blessed by that. Sweet hour of prayer. Let me just take a moment and welcome you. If you're here by drive-in, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, as you came in, hope that you received uh, the sheet that's got the songs on it so you can sing along uh, with our singers today. But also you'll see on the bottom a place where you can uh, place a prayer request at the end or at the end of the service if you make a decision. I would love for you to put that down as well. But it is a joy to be together. Whether you're here on the property or you're online, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part on this Labor Day weekend to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So join in a word of prayer, and then Brother Gene is going to lead us as we worship. I love these songs that uh, have been picked out today. It's already encouraged my heart to listen to them practice, and I know it will be a blessing to you. So let's join in a word of prayer, would you? Father, thank you so very much for the privilege to be on the property. And thank you for those that are joining us online as well. Uh, grateful that we can have multiple options, multiple opportunities. And Lord, we are grateful for that. And now as we go into the time of worship, Lord, can I just say thank you that you let us be alive today and be well and be able to come and to gather like this. I don't want to take for granted. Often I do. Forgive me. Today, may you remind us of why we're here and who we are here for. It is you, Lord. You are the reason. So help us to make much of you as we sing, as we worship. God, may you be glorified. And I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you for being here. Grab your song sheet. If you're online, these are songs you would know. So sing along as well. We're going to turn this over to Brother Jim. So, Brother Jim. Uh, good morning. I'm trying to say this is a beautiful day. Uh, Pray for us, especially me, because this morning I couldn't seem to carry a key in the five gallon bucket. So, so we always pray for us and we try to see. <laughs>
singing this morning. You know, I'm just thinking how blessed we are with our musicians and folks that are singing for us and our volunteers. Would you let them know here this morning that, amen, that's awesome. Amen. Yes. I'll tell you, I love that. that, that we are blessed. We are blessed. And uh, I can hear you singing. I believe, maybe. Uh, and so that's a tremendous. I love that song. Um, the first one. I don't know about you, but I'm drunk with wonder. And so I need his grace to bind me like a feather so that I'll be closer and closer to him. And that second song reminded me of uh, our first church that uh, Courtney and I were blessed to serve in. Mr. North Galloway, who often watches our services, now she would lead that song to begin the Sunday school hour. Praise him, praise him. And I don't know about you. But no matter what, I've got a lot to praise him for. I should not even be here today. Anybody else know me? We should not even be here. But God, in his grace, has blessed us. And we are thankful for that. I just want to encourage you as we come into this service. I, next Sunday, I'm looking forward to a special service. Lord willing, and the Greeks don't rise, my heart is that we will come together in one service. You that have been coming to the drive-in, be no different. You will come to the drive-in, and you can park right there in the field. And then others that have been coming to the 1030 service, we're going to make a way to social distance right here in the parking lot. will not inhibit in your view whatsoever. And uh, Lord willing, the singers will be outside as well. There will be some special music. Uh, Lord willing, we'll have a baptism service. We know that Brother Bill... Bassett is coming to be baptized. I pray there will be more. If you have not been baptized, if you would like to, um, I met with the deacons this week and looking at a portable baptistry that we'll put right there in the parking lot and uh, be able to baptize and have that on the line as well. And also, this, my heart is to be a time of renewal. That as we've been in two services, and we know we've been in two services before the pandemic, but even in the midst of this, that we can come together as one and we can be renewed in worship and our walk. But also, Brother Roy has challenged me and challenged our staff that, to do something that we could encourage even our weakness. And so the cross will be coming outside that we have in the sanctuary. And there will be an opportunity to renew commitments to pray for those that are lost. Or even invite somebody that you feel would come to the service. Maybe they can come park right beside you. Or if you would come, they can come and social distance with you and be here a part of the service. That will be next Sunday, 9 o'clock, one service together. And I look forward to that time together. And meeting with our deacons, I just want to say how much I appreciate them. I got a chance to hear their heart as we move forward for the long term of this. And uh, as continue to pray, they share some things of looking at making some transitions. But... That will come in time and in ways that we'll share. Uh, but I can promise you this. There will still be, no matter what we do, there will be multiple options and multiple opportunities to worship in the midst of this time. That is the heart of the deacons and that is my heart as well. So I just want you to be reminded of that. Also, Brett Westmoreland, I'd already lined him up to come and preach. I'll be here, but he was not able to preach during the summertime. So he's going to be preaching. So it'll be a special preaching, singing. Just a wonderful time next Sunday. As we get ready to pray this morning, again, I thank Ms. Nina for playing that sweet hour of prayer. So much to pray for. We want to continue to pray uh, for Joe Westmoreland. I was able to hear from him by text this morning that came through his surgery. The email went out last night. Uh, Joe had a, an accident with chainsaw, but it did able to get in there and get surgery and tie the artery up and, and repair but he was doing well this morning. Hopefully he'll be able to come home. Please, please keep praying for him. I see uh, Jamie and Johnny out there. We're praying for them and all the family. And Joe and Lynn might even be watching from the hospital this morning. So if you are Joe, we love you. We're praying for you. And I told him he had to get well soon. So uh, he can mess with his pastor. And uh, glad he's okay. Do you remember Al in Maryland? Al had to go back to the emergency room again yesterday. So please keep praying for him and Miss Maryland. And also remember uh, those that have had loved ones pass away this week. Remember John McCarter, his brother, passed away. 
Also, remember Jackie Conley. Um, her brother passed away, and so we are lifting these folks up in prayer. This morning in my reading time, I'm reading about uh, Elijah. He repaired the altar of God. The altar was broken down. And as a result, the people were broken down. In my heart, it just seemed like God began to burden my heart to say, our altars are broken down all across America. And as a result, we see the brokenness that's happening. And I'm asking God to help us to prepare the altars. To find that altar at home. Find that altar in the church. Find that altar as you make your way to work and you pray. Finding those places to pray and to repair the altar of God. This morning, I know it's not like what we would normally do before the pandemic. We were gathered in the altar to pray. Why? Well, I, I missed that. We'll do that soon. I believe that. But it doesn't dismiss what we can do. You can right there where you are in your car or wherever you are watching online. Would you make where you are an altar? Now let's go before the Lord. We need the favor of Almighty God in these days. So join me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come today. I was reminded in your word where Elijah began to ask the people of God how long would they halt between two opinions. Whether they're going to serve God or not. As he began to call them to repentance and revival, he started by repairing the altar. The place where people had met with God but it was broken down. Oh God, forgive us of our broken altars today. Forgive us, God, of allowing the altars to be broken down in our own heart, our own homes, in our own churches. But today we're asking you to help us to repair the altars, to come back to the place of, of the altar to pray. Because, Father, we need you as a nation as a community, as a church. You heard these prayer needs, but that's just a scratch of the surface, God. You know each and every need, God, would you divinely intervene and give peace and give grace and give strength. Father, you and a pastor this morning just had messaged me that there was someone dear in their church that had passed away suddenly, and Father, they were going into the church today heavy-hearted, I'm grateful that you're able to give grace, and I pray that you would. Father, we ask you, God, to touch this church, touch your people. Father, I pray that you would bring revival to our hearts. Let it not just be words that we say, but let it be the desperate call from our heart. Father, I pray that you bless every person that's in the drive-in and every person that's online. You know the need. And God, may we, as your people, repair the altar and make it a priority in our life, a fresh and new. Oh, Father, move now as they come to sing in our praise song. And then as we move ourselves into the Word of God, help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great, great song this morning as they come to lead us sing out with all of your heart. Let's join in and sing as this great song that I am a child of God.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody a child of God this morning? Hallelujah. Take your Bibles this morning go to Hebrews chapter number 11, if you would please. Hebrews chapter number 11. I want to tell you something. That blesses my heart, that song right there. Because I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, had it not been for Jesus, I wouldn't be here this morning. Had it not been for Jesus, none of us would be here at all. Had it not been for Jesus, my life would be totally different. Had it not been for Jesus, I wouldn't be saved and on my way to heaven. My mom and daddy wouldn't be saved. My family wouldn't be saved. We would not be in God's... So I'm just telling you under God. I, I Listen, does anybody else just want to say, thank God for Jesus Christ and His Son dying on the cross, blessing us, amen, hallelujah. He's worthy this morning of our praise. My life is different because of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Hebrews chapter number 11. We're going to look at verse number 30. Two, down through verse number 34. And the thought that's on my heart this morning is flipping the script, going from weakness to strength, and disadvantage to advantage. So if you're online this morning, thank you so much for being here and being a part. It is an awesome blessing to have you. If you are here in the drive-in, thank you from the depths of my heart. I'm so glad you're here. The Bible says in verse number 32, what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, notice this part, gained strength after being weak, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight. Flipping the script, going from weakness to strength. Would you pray with me, Father? I pray in the next few moments that you would just grant us the grace that we need and the touch of heaven that we need. Lord, I am grateful for the words that have been sung today that's touched our hearts. I am grateful for your word. God, nothing has to be added to or taken away. But God, I'm asking you as your servant today, I need your touch. As your people today, we need your touch. I'd ask you, Father God, today, those that are watching online, if there's anybody that has never been saved, would be saved today. Anybody here in the drive-in that has never been saved would be saved today. And God, those that are saved would be encouraged and challenged as we seek God to flip the script and go from weakness to strength. God, help us to understand the truth that in our weakness, you are made strong. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. We come to Hebrews chapter 11. It's what's known as the heroes of faith. The hall of faith, if you will. It's a list of names of people from the Old Testament who lived by faith and saw God do amazing things. There was a, a part as I've been reading through this that jumped out to me. Matter of fact, it is a phrase that has grabbed my attention over the last several weeks that out of weakness we are made strong. That word weakness that you see right there in, in verse number 34, it speaks of infirmity. That word infirmity is used throughout the New Testament. It speaks of a weakness of the body, limited incapacity of the body, maybe in a sickness or a feebleness of the body. But it also speaks of a weakness of the soul, a want of strength, if you will, and the capacity. And when you study the Strong's Concordance, it lists four things that we can be weak in our soul. Weak to understand something. Anybody want to say, yes, I'm weak in that right now? Trying to understand something? Trying to understand what's going on? 
How about weak to do great things and glorious things? Anybody would say, yes, in my heart, I desire to be used by God and do great things, but it seems like I'm so weak to do it. How about times when corrupt desires would come into our heart and yet we were weak to overcome them? Or times that we are facing trials and tribulations and we're weak to overcome. That word weakness speaks of the inability of our soul and our body to do all that we want to do. We must understand that we are weak. That's hard in our culture to admit that we are weak when you look at these individuals. Not just the ones listed before, but even in these verses. These were individuals that were weak. These were individuals that God took their weakness and made them strong. God took the weakness of their inability to see what God would do in their life so that it was not them, but God. Think about Noah. Noah built a boat in the middle of the desert. Hello. He didn't have a construction crew. He had his family. He was not a boat builder by trade, but God took his weakness and made him strong. Abraham was 75 years old when God called him to leave and to move to a land he'd never been to. And he was 100 years old when they had their first baby. Hello, did y'all catch that? 100 years old. The brother, in his weakness, God made him strong. Moses walked across the Red Sea on dry ground. They were weak in their ability to do it within themselves, but God made them strong. Joshua, Gideon, Samson, and David, all the same. In their weakness, God made them strong. What happened? God flipped the script. What do you mean, preacher? What's that phrase mean? It means to turn a situation and reverse it. It means to look at a situation that you're saying this is a disadvantage and turn it for an advantage. The way that our culture would use it would say, it's up to you. You're facing an obstacle. You have a disadvantage. You have a weakness. You got to work hard. You got to figure it out. You got to do something in your own self and your own strength to flip the script. But what I'm saying to you is to not human based. What I'm talking to you today about is not something you work harder to do. It is, it is saying to God, I am weak, but you are strong. In my weakness, Flip the script, Lord, and make me strong. In my disadvantage, flip the script, Lord, and show me an advantage. See, it's God doing the supernatural with natural people. We read of the Noahs and the Abrahams and the Enochs and the Davids and the Moses. And we're thinking, I'll never be them. If we were to interview them today, they would have said, I never thought. Among those that would be called the Hall of Faith, Moses would tell you, I had a stuttering problem. Noah would say, I've never built a boat a day in my life. Abraham would say, you understand me? I was 75 years old when God said leave. I was 100 trying to raise a baby. Sarah would say, I was 90 when I conceived this baby. My womb was dead. There's no way. But God flipped the script. When you and I are facing weaknesses today, in our own life, and we're facing the disadvantage. The NLT puts it this way. Their weakness was turned to strength. The message puts it this way. Their disadvantage was turned to advantage. They won battles. It was out of their weakness they were made strong. They had faintings. They had tremblings. They had stuff they were walking through. Yet God used them in a mighty way. Why? Out of their weakness, He was made strong. We like to admit weakness. No. We like being able to say, I got this. I can handle this. I'm facing an obstacle. I'm facing a, a situation that's difficult. I, I'll think my way through it. I'll power through it. I will find my way through it. But listen to what the writer of Hebrews says. No. These great heroes of the faith didn't think their way through it, didn't fight their way through it. They were weak, but Christ made them strong. I'm telling you, God's been working this over in me for a while now. Because I don't know about you, but I feel weak to understand some things right now. I feel weak to overcome some 
trials and tribulations. I feel weak to overcome the temptations that would come. I feel weak to try to do great things for God. But when I begin to think that in my weakness, Paul would say, I would rather glory in my infirmities so that when I am weak, He is strong. When I empty out my resources and I claim His resources, He makes me strong. God flips the, the script. Listen to these verses. The Bible said in Acts chapter 9, but Paul increased the more in strength. Romans 4 and 20. Abraham didn't stagger at the unbelief at God's promises, but was strengthened in his faith. The Bible said of Paul in 2 Timothy, Paul said, No man stood with me in my first defense. Everyone deserted me. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That word strengthened means to empower. It means to God to infuse His strength. Listen to what Ephesians says. Be strengthened by the Lord and the power of His might. 1 Timothy 1. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me. I like what the Amplified Version says there. I give thanks to Him who has granted me the needed strength and made me able to do this. I'm telling you, none of us can do what we're supposed to do. Whether it be a husband, a father, a friend, a, a, a walk to walk with Christ, to be what we need to be. But He has enabled us. He has infused us with power. I like what the Bible says in Philippians 4.13. I'm able to do all things through Him who strengthens me. Listen to the Amplified Version. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength with me. I'm sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's not me, it's Him. It's not me, it's Him. Preacher, that sounds good. How do I experience that type of life where He, he flips the script? Because I'm feeling awful weak to be a follower of Christ. I'm feeling awful weak to to be what I need to be and do what I need to do. I'm feeling awful weak in my testimony. I'm feeling awful weak in the trial I'm facing. I want you to know if you're being honest about your weakness, you are a candidate for the power of God. It is not until we admit how weak we are that we experience the power of Almighty God. But how do we do it just like they did? By faith. By faith. Preacher, how do I do that by faith? Well, the Bible says in this same chapter, chapter 11, verse 6, Now without faith it's impossible to please Him. For him who draws near Him must believe that He exists and rewards those that diligently seek after Him. I'm going to slow down a moment. I just want you to hear my heart for a moment. The way that we experience the power of God in our weakness is we understand our strength doesn't come from what I can do. My strength comes from Christ alone. Well, how do I get that strength, Pastor? By faith. I don't visibly see Him take a shot of strength and put it into my wrist. No! But by faith, I believe He's able to infuse me with strength that I don't have to do what I cannot do. But how do I get that? By diligently seeking Him. I thought about something last night and this morning. If you want to get stronger physically, you've got to activate your body. If you just sit there and do nothing, your muscles will get weak, your ligaments will get weak, your body will get weak, but you get stronger by activity. You get stronger by the things it takes to get strong. You lift weights, you walk, you do these exercises. You know how you and I get strong in our weakness? We exercise our faith in God. Now, let, let me just put it this way. If you want to get strong in Jesus, if you want to get listen, if you want to get strong in your body, you gotta take time to do it, right? You gotta take time to exercise. If we want to get weak, if we want to get strong in Jesus, we have to take time to exercise our faith. Listen, thank God you're here this morning. Thank God you're online this morning. But it's more than just a Sunday morning appearance. It is daily meeting with Jesus. And when I meet with Him, the Bible says faith comes by hearing 
and hearing the Word of God. So as I meet with Jesus and I pray and I get into His Word, you know what He's doing? He is infusing me with strength because I'm meeting with Him. It's my daily exercise regimen for Christianity. It's meeting with Jesus. The Bible says, if I diligently seek Him, that by faith I can be listed among those men and women right there who are weak but trusted God. They saw God's strength. Noah could have said, I've never built a boat. I'm going to build a desert, but I see God. Abraham, I've never been to this land. I'm too old to even reproduce and my wife to reproduce, but I see God. Moses, there's a Red Sea in front of you. Yes, I see the Red Sea, but I see God. Joshua, there's, there's walls to fall. Yes, I see the walls, but I see God. Having faith is, I see the obstacle, I realize I'm weak, but then I see God. And then I seek God, and I lean into Him, and I find His strength every day. And here's the question. How much time do you spend exercising with Jesus? Well, first, I'll tell you, uh, I really don't have time. Hogwash. It's getting ready for hunting season. You tell me somebody ain't going to rearrange their schedule to get up early and go hunting? Yes, they will. Oh, I'm preaching you mad. No, I'm just being honest. You will rearrange your schedule to do what you want to do. And if you want to remain a weak, unpowerless, that's not even a word, without power Christian, then you just keep spending your time doing everything else but spending time with Jesus. But if you want to lock step with Jesus, if you want to see God do amazing things, if you want to see the strength of God, you carve you out some time to be at the feet of Jesus. You carve you out some time to be in His Word. And I'm telling you, He will infuse you with strength. He's promised in His Word. Carve you out some time. To be with Jesus. And then, how do I keep exercising it? Whatever He tells me to do in that quiet time, do it for that day. Whatever He puts in front of me, do it for that day. Maybe it's call somebody. Maybe it's share your faith. Maybe it's get on your knees and pray for somebody. Maybe it's just doing what you've been called to do. And by the way, let me go ahead and say this because it's in my spirit today. We all want to do great things for God. But let's try this. Why don't we just do some things for a great God? I'm just talking about just go by your daily routine, but as you're doing it, you are doing it for a great God. So let's follow with me. Let me slow down again. I'm weak, but He is strong. These men and women, they were human beings just like you and I. The Bible said they had weakness. They didn't understand they were powerless to overcome. But he, God flipped the script because they believed Him and they acted by faith. By faith they acted. See, faith is belief plus action. Don't be like a little boy watching the man back in the day take the wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls. There's a big crowd. They're watching. He's coming across in the wheelbarrow. I mean, pushing the wheelbarrow. They all oh, they applauded. They applauded. He said, y'all believe? I can take this barrel and put it in here and go across. Oh, yeah, I believe. Oh, man, they cried. Oh, we believe. Went across. Sure enough, he did it. I mean, they were amazed. Then he said, hey, do y'all believe that I can put a person in this wheelbarrow and put them across and walk across and walk back and then be okay? Oh, yeah, we believe, we believe. There's a young man on the front row of the crowd. He said, sir, do you believe? I believe. I believe you can. He said, all right, get in the wheelbarrow. Jesus is saying, one thing to say you believe it, start living it. Start believing God and then acting out. So how do we get strong? Let's just walk through it again. I've got to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to believe that he's able to do the impossible. I've got to seek him with my whole heart. I've got to carve out time that I'm on my knees and in His Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And then daily I must exercise what He tells me to do by faith. And I can be made strong in Jesus.
It's not me, it's Him. And He infuses me with power. Here's my prayer for all of us today. Colossians 1, 11, listen closely. As we're facing this pandemic, as we're facing the disadvantage, hear me. So many times right now we'll say, I'm telling you, I just want to give up. It's too hard. Us as Christians are living the victim mentality right now. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there's things we don't understand. Yes, there's disadvantages in front of us. Yes, there are weaknesses that we are facing. But he has said, just like them, we can take those disadvantages and turn it to an advantage. He can take those weaknesses and make them strong. But we have to do it by faith. And here's my prayer that all of us will do in the midst of this season we're in. Paul says, we also pray that you'll be strengthened with all his glorious power. So you'll have all the endurance and patience you need. And may you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. Listen to another translation the way it puts it. We pray you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Can I get a witness? May God give us the strength and the faith to believe to stick it out over the long haul. He says, not the grim strength of beauty, your strength, teeth. He says, I'm not talking about, I'm going to get this, I'm going to do this, man, i got the strength and the power. That'll last all about a day. He says, no, but the kind of strength I pray for is the glory and strength God gives. It's the strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy to he who makes us strong. That's my prayer. That we will be strong in Jesus. Would you bow with me in prayer? Would you bow with me in prayer online this morning? Our heads about our eyes are closed. The time of invitation today. we come in time of invitation, let me say number one, if you're online today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior and you've never been saved, He wants to flip the script in your life. Jesus Christ died that you might be saved. He gave His life on the cross that through Him you might be saved. Would you trust in Him today? Would you let Him flip the script in your life? Oh, just ask Him to save you right now, right where you're at. Oh, out here in the drive-in, if you've never been saved, can I just ask you right there where you are, I don't care if you're a child or an adult, if you've never been saved, right there where you are, call out to Jesus. He'll flip the script. You were headed to hell, but now you're headed to heaven if you'll trust in Him. But maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm saved. But you're facing insurmountable odds. You're facing some things that are disadvantaged. I want to say to you today, the Lord Jesus can flip the script. If you will admit your weakness, He can infuse you with strength. Would you commit Him today to say, Lord, I want to be made strong. I'm weak. I need some time with you. I need to exercise my faith. Lord, help me. Surrender afresh in you to Him today. Let Him flip the script and what has been a disadvantage be an advantage or what has been a weakness to be made strong in Him that we'll live out this prayer, that I'll have not the strength that'll grip my teeth, I got this, no, but that glory strength that comes only from God. Would you bow with me and we ask God to do these things. Father, speak now as only you can. Oh, Father, I pray if there be anyone here that's lost, whether drive in or online, God, speak today. God, show them their lostness and they might be saved. I've been praying this morning that somebody somewhere get saved today. Lord, I just pray we'd love to see somebody saved. Father, for those that are saved, God, they're facing weakness, an inability to understand, uh, uh, an inability to overcome temptation and trials, an inability, Father, to do the things you've called them to do. But God, we know today that in our infirmities, you're made strong. So we want to commit afresh in you today, Father, to seek you for our strength to seek time alone with you, to activate, to exercise our faith. You have promised throughout the scriptures I read today to be with us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to infuse us. I can do all things through Christ who infuses me with strength. And you tell us in your word that without you we can do nothing. 
So today, help us to admit our weakness and that you'll be made strong in our life. Move in this time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's how we come to do our invitation online. If you made a decision for Christ, would you let us know? You can message me. You can comment. Let us know if you prayed to receive Christ. I would love to know that if you did today. You can go to our website. And there's a comment place there. Or you can comment right there. And we want to thank you for joining online. You can be a part. If the Lord leads you to give online, you can do that as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Those here in the drive-in, can I say again, thank you for being here. I mean that. If God touched your heart today and you made a decision for Christ, on the bottom part of your song sheet is a place you can put that decision, multiple decisions that you might have made. You can place that there, tear it off, and place it in the offering bucket as you go out. Or if there's a prayer need, you can place that at the bottom of the song sheet as well and place it in the offering button. And I just want to say thank you for giving. Your generosity has allowed us to continue to minister in a way that I just give God praise for. So thank you. I just pray the Lord will bless you on this Labor Day weekend. Don't forget, next Sunday we'll be together in one service at 9 o'clock. I'll be back again Wednesday night online at 6.30, as well as the morning devotions. Be a part of that if you'd like. Again, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. May the Lord encourage you. May the Lord infuse you with strength. And may our weakness be turned to strength in the power of Christ is our prayer. God bless you today. Thank you so much.